Follow these steps to replace the elevator motor and shaft in a model 3561 and 3563 vending machine. Tools you need include a 3 32nd inch Allen wrench, 1 4th, 11 32nd, 5 16th, and 3 8 inch socket or nut driver, an 11 32nd inch open end wrench, needle nose pliers, box knife or side cutters, belt tension tool or equivalent, and a number 2 Phillips screwdriver. Power off the machine and disconnect the elevator motor. Raise the bin up midway of glass. Loosen the elevator tension nuts with 11 32nd inch open wrench. Note each quarter turn equals approximately one tenth of a pound. Keep track of quarter turns for reinstallation, assuming you're not changing drive belts. Remove the four nuts securing the delivery bin to the belt mounts. If the nuts being removed are acorn style, please replace with number eight nylock nuts. Remove delivery bin assembly and place on a chair so as not to damage the linked energy chain. If belt replacement is needed, remove the number 6 nylock nuts to remove the belt clamp plates. Before removing the belt clamps, note the tab ends must be pointed upwards. Please note the position of the belt ends for reinstallation of belts. The new belts will be in one continuous loop. Use a box knife or side cutter to cut the belt in one place before installing. Do not shorten. The new belt must be full length. Remove the two Phillips screws securing the plastic motor cover. Remove the two Phillips screws securing the upper LED assembly to gain easy access to the elevator frame retaining nuts. Remove the five number 10 nuts with a 3 8 inch socket. In some cases, the lower frame nuts may need loosening to allow the elevator frame to rotate out at the top. Now locate and remove the ceiling permagum to allow the harness to move out with the elevator frame. Feed through the harness to gain the length needed. In early models, the left side LED holders may need to have the Phillips screws removed that secure the bracket to the door to allow the elevator frame to move outward. Bring out the top portion of the frame sufficiently to gain access to the motor screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Then locate the motor axle drive coupler and loosen the 3 32nd inch set screw securing the axle extension. Locate the fasteners and remove. If changing the axle or timing pulley, locate the set screw and loosen and remove the timing pulley and axle. Inspect the axle for a circuit groove that will locate the E-ring. Install updated axle and timing pulley. This version allows the addition of an E-ring which will eliminate the drive shaft to become disconnected from the elevator motor coupler. 
Secure all fasteners during the process using Loctite Blue Thread Locker number 243. Align belt holders at the same height when reinstalling the motor assembly. Place the belt over the left timing pulley and insert it into the elevator frame. You may install the axle into the coupler during this time with the right belt looped over the right timing pulley. Ensure the drive shaft is fully engaged into the motor coupler and tighten the set screw using Loctite Blue Thread Locker 243. Install the four screws into the elevator motor to secure the motor to the elevator frame. Locate the groove on the drive shaft and install the E-ring. Reinstall the elevator frame ensuring the harnesses are not trapped between the door and the frame. Install the five number 10 nuts. Also tighten the lower frame nuts. Reinstall the upper LEDs. Ensure all harness wires are tucked away and are clear of any moving parts. Reapply the permagum sealant making sure there is a good air seal. Failure to make a good seal will result in condensation forming on the harnesses in the ambient section which can cause control board failure. Install at the top left of the door to ensure proper sealing around the harnesses. Please separate red and blue motor drive wires away from the existing encoder wires to eliminate possible transmission interference. Then reinstall the motor cover. Ensure the belt holders are aligned, then raise belt heights to a comfortable working level. Reinstall the elevator bin assembly with number 8 nylock nuts and not the acorn nuts that you removed earlier. The next clip shows a bin misaligned and how to adjust it. Hold the left side while applying vertical pressure on the right side. You'll hear a click or two. Realign the bin so the right side is one tooth higher than the left. Raise the bin to the top of the door to check for left spacing from bin to frame of around an eighth inch and ensure the top limit switch is contacted. Adjust the alignment of the bin further if needed. The bin should not fall freely. If it does, the belt tension will need to be increased. Turn the tension adjuster a quarter turn at a time. Remember how many turns were removed earlier. It's important that the tension of both the right and left timing belts are equal. Use the belt tension tool to ensure that the correct tension is set. When adjusted to the correct tension, the bin will stay in place without falling. Return the bin assembly to the bottom position to reconnect the encoder motor. The elevator will now operate properly. 
Here is the top switch with proper spacing. For more assistance, call VenNet Technical Support at 1-800-833-4411.